Uh, you know what, I just feel like ranting about something here, and before people half of my case, yes, I am pretty much describing guilty by association here, but the stupidity of this is reaching alarming levels of sumptuous retardation here. So, I saw this a while ago on Twitter, and it instantly pissed me the hell off. Here is what the media and their idiotic cohorts will do. Let's say person X will be brought to the surface or public attention due to some or other controversial position or action that is not uh, socially acceptable. Who decides what is socially acceptable? That's a conversation for another day, but anyway. Something that tarnishes them and presents them to the public as uh, one of ill repute, you can say. Then these idiots will go through a timeline and look at everyone this person X has ever been in contact with, looking for even the flimsiest pieces of evidence, so-called, to try and make the case that whoever they don't like must now be outcast and condemned. Now, the person in question in this scenario is Marjorie Taylor Greene because it included a picture of her standing next to Fuentes, I assume before or after she gave a speech, I think it is AFPAC, because apparently that's how events work in La La Land. If you appear next to or with someone, then you automatically agree with everything that person said about anything ever. Following that logic, you can easily make the case every publisher, place, platform, nay the internet itself, is a problem because it amplifies the capacity for more people to hear and see any and everything bloody controversial. And the comment was something along the lines of, this is what she was always like. And I'm thinking to myself, yada, you slimy piece of shit. Because here's the thing, if you follow what Fuentes has said and done, you will not take this dude seriously in a million years. He is a walking meme who says insane shit. He's a fruitcake. The media looks batshit as well, calling him a white nationalist while he's palling around with a black dude. And the narrative is all over the shop. Now, we all damn well know the only reason this shit is surfacing now is, like I said before, Fuentes is currently what you could call a valuable controversial currency. The stock is presently riding high. It's not the first time they pulled the shit either, by the way. They tried to pull this back in March as well. And it didn't make waves then. Why? Well, it's very simple. Unless you're knee-deep in internet meme lore over here, no one outside of that knew or gave a shit who Fuentes was. He was an irrelevant nobody in terms of the mainstream bubble. So no one cared. Ah, but now that he's met with Trump, suddenly the controversial currency stock is highly valuable. So now these assholes will cash in. And that is how these slimy bastards in the media play the game. Now, given the variables involved in the scenario, especially Kanye admitting Trump didn't even know who the hell Fuentes even was, how the hell can you then, with a straight face, look at a single damn picture of Green and Fuentes and instantly assume she must know everything about Fuentes, even though you morons posting this picture trying to smear her, you like yourselves didn't even know who the fuck Fuentes was up until about five minutes ago. Madness. Now, the other bit of controversy, and I couldn't use that term any more loosely, is she tweeted out a list of people who should be allowed back on Twitter, and his name was on that list. I know, very scary. But the thing is, with the media, their worldview is very black and white. In the grand scheme of things, they don't give a flying ass about any of those people, mind you. They operate on the basis of threats and pawns and that controversial currency market model. The only reason why they care about anyone or anything is when they're either an emerging threat that needs to be knocked off, or in the case of Fuentes, a useful idiot, a pawn to be used as ammo to try and take out members of Trump's coalition. Now, the rest of us, we don't see the world in this distinction. Well, at least not in the purely sort of bloodlust way that they do. Because our coalition isn't as tightly knit. Ours is broad and based on, frankly, shit-stirring and funnies, which is obviously much more amusing. This is also why the media hates comedy. It's galvanizing. It's also why we don't care about silencing many of these people, because they're idiots. And some of us are a lot smarter than the media thinks we are. We're not moronic lemmings that believe everything they print because we don't have cabbages for brains. It's the same reason why we don't want to see the unhinged irrelevant celebrities leave Twitter. Their deranged attention-seeking lunacy is an endless whale of comedy to poke fun at. So please, dear jackasses and estranged freaks of Hollywood, please stay on Twitter so we can use your narcissism for our own amusement. And that is all for today. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time.